So I went to the opticians yesterday because I keep getting these nasty migraines. And I'm trying to work out, is it because of my lack of sleep? What am I eating? Well, really, I'm not even eating anything, to be honest with you. I like to go through the day on a good old intermittent fast, but an intermittent fast means that you're eating at some point and I'm not even eating. So am I hydrating myself? Of course I am. I'm using pink Himalayan salt in my water, neck it back, happy days. Called up the opticians. I was like, look, man, I need to get my eyes checked out. I explained to him what I did. And he goes, ah, oh, Mr. Pistu, we were wondering when you were going to call. I was like, really? Why? Well, you're already a customer of ours. I was like, really? Oh, I completely forgot about that bad boy. And he says to me, when was the last time you had your eyes checked? Well, I said, last time I had my eyes checked, I walked out looking, well, feeling very happy because apparently I have eagle vision. I was like, wow, yeah, I'm cool with that. And he goes, when was the last time you put your glasses on? I said, straight up with you, my friend. <laughs> the day I brought them, I put them on five minutes and they were irritating me. And he goes, well, you need to put them on then. So, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> you can now call me Dr. Vector. Today, I'm going to be dissecting the marketplace. We're going to find some surgical opportunities in Bitcoin by exploring particular vectors in the chart of Bitcoin. So, if you are new to the channel, you might think, oh, he's just wearing his glasses. This is a first in a very long time, when I should have put these bad boys on. It kind of goes with the attire. What do you think? New waistcoat? Are we good? Are we looking well, ladies and gents? I hope you're all happy. Forgive me for last night. I wasn't able to do no live, but hopefully, touch wood, all being well, everything will be back to normal going into this evening. So I'm here to give you a diagnosis on Bitcoin. Let's get with the flavor. <laughs> I can't believe this guy is actually wearing the shades. <laughs> Anyways. Bitcoin is my patient today. And today we can see Bitcoin has, according to the electrocardiogram, a quite uh, interesting tachycardia effect. It's actually moving up right now. And word on the street says that Bitcoin's behavior is consistent with institutional buying. Look at this. Bitcoin's recent outperformance fueled by institutional demand. Good old JPM. Okay. All right, cool. So you seem to see that JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, they seem to be this, this threesome in bed all the time. Like he says something is in line with what he says. But, you know, it's piggy in the middle kind of thing. It's like I don't want him to say that, but he can say that. And whenever he says something, I'm not really happy with it, but he can say it. Yeah, so BlackRock is really the master of puppets to all my Metallica fans. So with that being said, it goes on to the idea of the ETF and what the story is. Fine. So let's just try and put things into perspective. They're saying that significant Bitcoin inflow into larger wallets. That suggests institutional investor demand. Well, what do we categorize as institutional? Is it because they have a large amount of Bitcoin that classifies them as an institutional player? We've got to really understand that. Is Wall Street really stepping in right now into cryptocurrency? All right. So let's look at the logic. This chart right here shows the bid and the ask sum within a 10% range from price. Now, to not confuse you all, right, the bid and the ask. Bid is what they sell, ask is what they're offering, what, in essence, what people are buying at. But it's actually the reverse. In order for the bid to sell, someone has to buy. And in order for the ask to offer, someone has to be there to sell, okay? So what we're seeing right now is, as a play right now, we've got the bids really coming into play with the ask not really doing much. So there is buying activity happening in Bitcoin. So we, we know that to be the case. We go into other assets like we go into the live order flow with um, Jenny Day. And you can see Bitcoin's been taking a bit of a smack. And a lot of liquidity has come off the marketplace in the last hour well, since 11 o'clock this morning. We can see 39 million on the futures. They're all selling up, as you can see right here. And they're going in the double, in the triple figures right now. 236 million sold on Bitcoin at 34,205. As we scroll down, we can see that we're not really seeing much happening on spot. A few guys are buying Ethereum on spot. And there are more guys buying Ethereum on spot than there is Bitcoin, which is a little bit of a cause for concern. Okay, so look, you've got 23 million right here on Bitcoin. And then we go over to Ethereum, you've got 20, well, 58 million on Ethereum. So the idea is that we could be assuming that maybe altcoin season could be coming into play because that's how people are going to be translating it. All right. Bitcoin dominance is up. So the altcoins in technical technically should be coming down in principle. All right. Because people are favoring Bitcoin. 
But what's been going on? Well, look, let's just consider this. Right now, Israel's latest army briefly raids the Gaza as war fears jolts markets. NASDAQ yesterday takes a slap in the face because Google has missed earnings. And we're already starting to see that flavor coming into play. But what is it that I always talk to you about that nobody else is really talking about? The bonds. Check this. So US companies shy away from debt markets as Treasury route drives up costs. So now... This is where it gets can get a little bit confusing, but just to simplify it for you, it's like this. Higher interest rates means companies are going to less likely try and take on debt unless they have to, which means that they're going to start tapping into their cash reserves. We're not hearing a lot about companies buying back shares other than Visa's decided to step in and say we're going to do a $25 billion buyback. That's all good for Visa, but ultimately, if the economy is up or down, people are still going to be using money. So that's why Visa in principle doesn't really have an impact on whether it does good or bad in the economy, it's just like oil. It goes up and down whether the economy is up or down, all right? It's always going to be a commodity. Visa provides a service as not a commodity, but it behaves on the idea that even if there is a recession, people still need to exchange money. Depend it doesn't matter about the value, okay? So that's kind of good news for Visa, but we're seeing a reduction in a lot of companies buying back their own stock. Why? Because they're favoring cash. Why? Because the bonds to stock ratio is starting to suggest something. What do we mean by bonds to stock ratio? Quite simply means when stocks are overvalued, it means that the bonds are undervalued. And if the bonds are overvalued, it means stocks are undervalued. So where are we right now? Check this bad boy out. We got the stock to bond ratio, which pretty much says... That if stocks are overvalued, it means the bonds are undervalued. So people are favoring risk. We're starting to see a turn in the marketplace because we are at what would appear to be a level of optimism. It's above two. OK, so that tells us that something's starting to change in the relationship between stocks and bonds. We know no one's buying bonds right now. OK, even China has slowed down on picking up U.S. debt because they've got in-house problems. They need to encourage domestic investors to buy exist existing assets within China, let alone go to the U.S. and start picking it up from there. All right. So what we're doing now is we're breaking down the picture surgically to understand Bitcoin's movement. Now, Bitcoin has completely outperformed everything. All right. Gold's taken a slump, but gold is progressively moving up. OK, Bitcoin is kind of following what gold is doing. But the same token, is this just hype? All right. Are they selling? This is the question. So we're going to pull up some article, not articles, but we're going to pull this bad boy up here. Now, this is ExoCharts. Just to put things into perspective for you, and then we start diving into Bitcoin price action, as it is 10 past two. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, please let me know if you guys like the flavor with the shades today. Please let me know. I look like a banker. Oh, I kind of read that wrong, but yeah. I thought I, I think I look like a snooker player, bro. Like, if I was a, if I was your doctor, could you would you like me to be your doctor? <laughs> What a guy. Anyways, so in front of you is the exo charts, but it's the 8,500 tick. Okay. Now, this represents change in price. Okay. 8,500 times. Now, it usually takes a little while for this candle to form. It takes around 11 hours or so. Okay. But I look at it because it gives me information about what's going on over a period of time. Pay attention to all this stuff right here. Can you see? 473, 516, 485, 363. These are, in principle, delta readings where most of the buying has been happening here. But imagine the bid and the ask. Remember, when people are bidding, they're selling, okay? But in order for them to sell, someone has to buy. And the flip side to that is on the asking price. When the asking price is going up, it means that aggressive buyers are coming in, but what's really happening is aggressive sellers are selling into those buyers. So we've got neg we've got positive delta up here at the highest point in Bitcoin, okay? And it's stalled. We start to see 545 and 302.380 on the negative side for the delta. So it's like they're selling from the highest point, okay? We're still getting the selling happening up here. And then we've got a little bit more buying. And this is the current candlestick right now, which is suggesting there's not that much activity happening just yet. OK, so we've got to be very, very cautious with what Bitcoin is doing right now. So we go over to the cal calendar and you can see bright as day that Bitcoin, not Bitcoin, but the dollar has had quite a bit of interesting news. OK, unemployment claims are up. That's good news. And it was higher than what they had projected. And it's way higher than what they were forecasted last time. All right. GDP is advanced to 3.5%. Core durable goods orders is up 0.5%. And 
durable goods month on month is up 4.7%. What does that scream to you? That screams to you activity in the economy. That screams to you inflation, okay? So we've always got to make sure we're aware of what's going on in the US economy because it's going to suggest whether or not investors are going to step in, pick up bonds or pick up stocks, all right? So we go back into Bitcoin's price section and we see what the story is there. Now, yesterday in the live stream, we had some very interesting zones in Bitcoin where we were waiting for them to come back into and it took a little while, but they eventually came back into that, that critical 34,200, 34,300 zone. Let's just go into the book map a second. Man, these glasses are really winding me up, man. Can, can I take these off? Like, I mean, these, these, this is unnecessary right now. Do I really need these shades? My optician, man, he's taking the mick. Anyways, looking at Bitcoin's flow of orders, look at this. Remember when we said yesterday that there is particular interest within a specific range on Bitcoin and the way we read the book map itself is, look, look at all this zone right here, man. This is limit buyers placing orders and counseling them, okay? Now, we've got to consider the following. If this zone is going to act as support, which leads us to believe that the 34,000 and the top side of this range at 34,350, if this is going to be an area of support for Bitcoin, that would marry up to the idea of the volatility on the 50 EMA, okay? That's what the logic says. We go into the higher time frames, and now we've got a lot of guys on the idea of a golden cross coming into play. Well, the 50 has crossed over the 800 EMA, and it has also crossed over the 200 EMA, but I wouldn't even class it as a crossover because it's been flat, okay? So we are going to question this validity of this move because the problem I have got is, of course, Bitcoin has still got this imbalance in the chart, okay? Now, if I say that Bitcoin's going to come down towards this point, doesn't invalidate Bitcoin's move to the upside. What it does is it gets me to believe that if the big boys are going to start coming in at this point, then surely they're going to come in at a little bit of a cheaper rate because if you go over to the high block itself, you can see that we have got still... At 36,400, we got $107 billion worth of short liquidations left on the table. Going to the actual high block here on the liquidation levels, you can see, look at that sea of liquidity. Look at that pink salmon right there. That is rough. <laughs> that is rough, okay? We have got $507 million worth of long liquidations, 25x at 33,434. The absolute most area of interest on Bitcoin at 33,000, where is it? 33,434. 33,434 will take us towards this area right here, okay? So it's not too far away, ladies and gentlemen. But it, we, listen, when, Bit, right, let me put things into perspective. When Bitcoin makes a move outside of the norm of what the market's doing, then naturally anticipate a retrace back down because the retrace back down would effectively be a retrace in the bigger marketplace, for example. And then if Bitcoin has the capacity to keep moving higher, Bitcoin will still shift out. That's the truth. It's no different to when I say to you guys, the altcoins, look at the altcoins that are trading above the 50 EMA. Any altcoins trading above the 50 EMA and everything starts to pull back. When those altcoins come back to the 50 EMA, if the trend in the bigger market starts to continue, those altcoins are going to bounce from the 50 EMA. But don't be paying attention to altcoins that are below the 50 EMA because there's a reason as to why they're not going up. If there are other altcoins going up above the 50 EMA when the marketplace is the way it is, you're going to understand that as it comes back down again to the 50, that point is when you decide to say, you know what, I'm going to load up on the principle that they're getting ready to continue higher because the strength was present in the move last time. All right. So with that being said, go back into the charts. We're going to consider that Bitcoin has 32,238 at a point of support on the daily. All right. If Bitcoin breaks this zone, right? Bitcoin will come back down and recover the full vector and give back everything. Okay. That's the sad truth. Now we've got a lot of guys saying like Bitcoin bull run, Bitcoin bull run. Okay, cool. We're good for the bull run. Keep going, keep gaining your ground Bitcoin because we do have vector candles at the top side right here at 39k. This is why you're seeing a lot of people talking about Bitcoin going to 40, 41,000. Are they justified in it? It would only be the next logical spot for Bitcoin to go and turn from. People are adamant that Bitcoin can't go any further from this point. 
Okay, there's not really any news coming out other than good old Sam Bankman Free stepping on trial today as the king of crypto is going to be revealing everything about what the story is. Are investors going to be seeing anything to that? Are they going to be concerned about it? I don't really think so. There's nothing that he hasn't done that's already been priced into the marketplace. So we don't really need to worry about that guy. But more importantly, let me just take you back to something else. Risk on off. So this is going to be aligning your, your mindsets with whether you should really be buying or selling, okay? Right now in the stock market, the principle says that risk is off. So what does that mean? Well, it means that investors aren't putting on risk. So what are they actually doing? Well, they're going to be doing one of two things, either going to be going into dollars or they're going to be going into the bonds themselves. So let's go over to the yields and have a look at where we are. Look at this. Yields are starting to go down, okay? But they're in a trend, progressive trend upwards. And this is on the daily, all right? We go to the one hour time frame. You can see the yields took a little slap to the downside on the back of the news announcements. All right. They've closed up some gaps and we don't really have any gaps in line for the yields themselves to be worried about. But it's still at the 5% region. All right. Go down into the bonds itself. You can see the bonds market had a nice little flavorsome move right there. So this is the tone that we're getting at the start of the marketplace when the market actually opens in 10 minutes time. You can see where the tone is. They're trading above the daily open. It looks like we might have a good day today. But when I say good day, it means a bit of a recovery. All right. You only need to go into the stock market to have a look at what's been going on. And Google has been putting pressure on the NASDAQ. OK, it's in a market correction. Look, it says here that there are zero stocks up on volume, zero stocks down on volume, and only two stocks are breaking out. It's not a good day in the marketplace. You go over to the NASDAQ itself and have a look. I mean, look at the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. How's that bad boy doing? That's doing relatively well. Still trading higher right there. But I'm looking at the NASDAQ and the S&P because this is what usually happens. Here we go. We're coming into the big, big moving average. The SMA, the simple moving average where a lot of long-term investors are looking at this. And you can see that NASDAQ is coming into a very important point on the daily. And that was yesterday's close. All right. So we could be in line for a little bit of movement today in the NASDAQ, maybe a little bit of a recovery on the back of the fact that Google itself missed its earnings. Let's just go have a look at Google. Look at that for a bad day for Google. Rough little vector. Look at that. That is wrong. OK, so that's not good for us. And we've got the vector candle gap. Remember the gap that we spoke about yesterday? They've cleared that gap near enough. So really, Google has everything in its power to try and load up from this point. All right. If investors are only seeking risk off situations, it means that if they are in a profitable position or in a zone where they're buying up, they need to capitalize on that, which is why you will see snapbacks happen in the marketplace. This is what happens in bearish markets. It's called a fade. They load up on the drop, they fade back into it, and then they wait for it to come back down again where they're doing more loading up. Okay, cool. With that being said, let's just go back into BTC and have a look at some more levels on Bitcoin. Right, what we got going off here? Um, the Google Google split. No, what was it? Um, CZ warned. OK, CZ warned FOMO moon boys. Now they will learn how the market works. I think the glasses are like Superman's. Maybe they give him X-ray vision. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Question. How many of you are currently in longs right now on Bitcoin? I need to understand that. OK. Let's just have a look at that. So whilst you guys are typing that up, I want to show you something on how much pressure the stock market, how how strong Bitcoin has been against the stock market, the stock market. Look at this. So this is Nasdaq, right? And the 14249. OK, now I do a weekly projection on assets across the board. And in that asset, I spoke about the Nasdaq on Saturday night. OK, 22nd of October. And I said, I expect NASDAQ to come back down to the 14249 as they break in this region and come down and clear this vector candle. OK, and they've actually come and tapped that zone and I missed it by twelve, fifteen dollars, I think. Where was it? There you go. About forty five. No. Yeah. Ten dollars. I missed it by eight dollars. OK, before they initiated the reversal of the stopping volume candle. Look left. And what did they do? They come and attack that nasty green vector candle on the four hour time frame before they shifted. Look at that. What a rough zone. Missed it, but missed. Didn't miss it. It, it came in pretty much. OK, so that's what my logic was for Nasdaq. But then you look at Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin's done the complete opposite, ladies and gentlemen, for the week. 
We already projected Bitcoin's move to move higher anyway. I've shown you this before. Look, I expected Bitcoin to be up here by Thursday, okay? And it's 34,000. Where we at right now? We're in that zone, okay? What was my logic? It's because Bitcoin was getting ready to move up on the principle of the vector candles, okay? We have ourselves in principle a couple of more waves in the chart. So by the order of three, you've got one, you've got two, and then you've got this zone, three, okay? We are extended beyond measure. But this sort of move is going to prove Bitcoin's worth as to whether or not people are still picking up Bitcoin. Look, remember your boxes. This is on the four-hour chart. Remember that. Remember your boxes. We've had big deviations away from the moving average. Perfect time to sell and buy. Don't get all messed up when I say that. It's a perfect time to sell and buy. What do I mean? Well, if you are in longs on Bitcoin, perfect time to sell. Okay? If you are out of a position looking to buy Bitcoin, this opportunity of Bitcoin trying to work its way lower would be an awesome opportunity. So because Bitcoin has done the opposite of what the bigger marketplace has been doing, we're naturally going to expect the opposite from Bitcoin when the bigger marketplace comes into play. Because if I see Bitcoin spike lower when everything's going up, it's getting ready to move higher. We're looking for those retraces. We want those snapbacks. And the way we see those snapbacks is when we start paying attention to the smaller time frames. Look, we want to you see this here. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for these snaps. Those are your opportunities to load up on Bitcoin. Now, it has started to show some interesting behavior where we're not really seeing them clear certain zones. But if we have a closer look, we've got the presence of the past. The ghost of the Christmas past is coming into play, guys. Red vector candle as a clue. Look at that. No hesitation. What do we call this? We call this the stop run zone. Okay. My days. The stop run zone. What does that mean? Well, Bitcoin has to clear the daily open to improve the odds of it getting ready to rip up towards 35 again on the logic that they're trapping more traders. All right. If the institutional players are loading up on Bitcoin right now, Bitcoin needs to stay within this zone. But you can look at it. Look, it's, it's quite treacherous. It's giving me insight into what this area is all about. OK. Now, if Bitcoin on the book map cannot succeed the VWAP, which sits at 34,450, we're going to have a little bit of a problem, okay? Because they seem to be selling from this VWAP, okay? Notice this area. At the highest point, sold. Highest point, sold. So the logic would say that if they're going to trap more traders so that they can come back down into this liquidity down here where the limit buyers are currently present, all right? Look, we got big boys coming in at 32,000. Where is it? Come on. 32,500, I've got 1,296 Bitcoin, 1,296 Bitcoin orders, 32,800, 930, bruv, that means, yeah, 32,000, you know when the doctor takes off his glasses and you're like, so doctor, what have I got? And he takes off the glasses and he's like, well, look, man, it's true that you have the disease and, you know, there is no cure for being an asshole. You know, when he does that, when he takes off the shades, that's that's a big moment, you know? And that's where I'm at right now between me and these bloody shades, having to take them off like a 70-year-old. I mean, I'm only 38, but boy. Anyway, back, back to the business, back to the diagnosis. Here we go. 1,322 Bitcoin at 32,500. Now, look, if they're loading up Bitcoin to go higher, it's a matter of time before it comes back down to that point. That's, that's, the, that's the truth. Because it's like anyone now and Bitcoin breaks higher from this point, if we even go by the logic of three, one, two hits, third would do that. That's what the logic would say. Because they're finished with the liquidity. Look, it's done. Where was that? Oh, come back to it. No, they didn't. Came down. Came back up to it. Okay, finish that zone. We're done with it. Come back down. This zone has a vector candle. Okay? They need to clear the daily open to really suggest that they're going to get ready to do that. Why? Because retail's impressionable. They ain't looking at Bitcoin when it's negative. Forget that. They're not interested in Bitcoin when it's red. It's a psychological figure. Oh, it's down 2% for the day. 
Someone goes onto their Bitcoin chart and they see it's down for 2% for the day. They'll be like, oh man, Bitcoin's crashing. Bruv, it's moved up nearly 30%. You know? 2% back is, is not a problem. Sorry, 10%, 11% in the last couple of days. Like, that's not a problem. Okay? This is Bitcoin. All right? So keep that in mind. So going into the actual marketplace right now, it's still four more minutes until the market opens. Remember, you're always going to get the sweet spot of Bitcoin once the market fully opens and digests what's happened in the marketplace. All right. Let's go and have a look at the Ethereum. <laughs> Some of the shit that comes out of my mouth. Ethereum is currently stacked at the 50 EMA. This is an area where they could potentially find resistance where you're actually going to be testing your ability as a trader. So... Two things that can happen with Ethereum, okay? You're either going to get shaken out on the red vector candle that could appear inside of this zone right here, okay? That's what could happen. And that last attempt, lower, is to shake out or induce more traders to go short, okay? That's what the logic would say. But then at the same time, in this area here, you'd be looking for green vector candles to break. Why? Because at this point, the 50 EMA would be right here, all right? Remember, EMAs are laggard. If the EMA is pointing downwards, people are in a downwards trend, but you can see the structure could be coming into play on Ethereum. And that would be happy days to the upside on that structure right there. Okay, let's quickly go and look at some other assets on the cross across the, the, the board. Here we go. Dogecoin, not really giving me flavor. That loom is there. What did we say about loom, ladies and gents? Let's have a look at loom. Back into that vector candle, despicable nature. What a story. Told you all, man. Take the profits. It's going to do the same shit. I'm telling you, go and find yourself an altcoin. When it starts to falter, you're only going back into the vectors because they can't scare off the marketplace. All right. They need to keep people holding on to the altcoin so that they can sell into them. That's the logic. Um, there we go. Tech info. Tino, not bullish or bearish. Lol. It's all about using your head, making profits, long, short, buy, low, sell, high, period. That's the flavor. That's it. Forget what it's doing. Buy, uh, forget the price. Oh, it has to be 41. No, it fucking doesn't. It's going to be 41 when someone's there to sell it at 41. You see? Who's going to be selling at 41? Well, the clever dudes that are buying at 41. Well, the clever dudes that brought right here. 35,152. Why does it read it like that? I can't read it straight, man. It really wrecks me when I see that. So, yeah, that's that's the logic of where we are right now, ladies and gentlemen. Going into the calendar of news announcements today, we've got Amazon. Mm, Amazon is declaring its earnings tonight. Google misses. Uh, Microsoft's done okay. If we just quickly go over to the Amazonian forest. Look at that, man. We've got some flavor coming into Amazon. Isn't it mad that the largest market cap is really like the cheapest one when you think about it? Look at NVIDIA. All right. It's at $417 a share. But if you look at Amazon, this thing has a horrible debt ratio. Look at this. Check this out. You would think, right, a company that big with a market cap of that much, why on earth has it got 96% debt? <laughs> Not good, man. But there, there, there's obviously something going on behind the scenes. You know, you get as much debt as possible. Why? Because you can't bloody tax it. Good old Jeff. Happy days. Anyways, we're going to be expecting the market to pull some flavor right now. So let's just get into BTC. Let's have a look at what's going on there. Bitcoin, let's hold out. Let's get rid of all this mad drawing on the chart. Let's get rid of this. Happy days. All right, then. Cool. So let's see what we've got going into the flavor today. Let's look at the book map. Let's have a look at that bad boy coming up to the VWAPUS. All right. That's good news. Still got that commitment. 1,321 Bitcoin orders at 32,500. I need to pull this bad boy up. And let's just have a look at Bitcoin on... Let's have a look at Bitcoin on the depth of market. Here we go. So what have we got? Bitcoin right now is currently trading towards value, moving away from the value area low. And it's picking up value right now. So we're, 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 this could actually adjust if the contracts start to get a little bit busy inside of this zone. Point of control leads us to 34,449. I would expect Bitcoin to hit that because that's where the bigger amount of contracts are currently sat in the order flow. However, we've got 630 down here at 34,289. So in other words, the point of control could change. That means the point of value could change. That means what they see as high value up here could actually change by only what? 
by only 15 more contracts getting exchanged at 34,289. If they're not exchanging big at this point right here, then we'd be hopeful that Bitcoin can go higher from this point. Now it's at 641. Look, 655 at the point of control. It needs to surpass 645 to change the point of control. So then that means value is lower. Look, starting to mark lower. That could be a sign. If it changes, that could be a sign that the value is aiming low. Look, it's coming up 642. That's really important right now for me. Keeping an eye on that zone right there, 643, 6, not changing. If it can surpass it, happy days. But look, it's, it's moving up. You see that 645. This is important when it comes to order flow, right? Because you're now witnessing value changing. Is it changing for the higher? Is it changing for the lower? Well, if the highest point of value is up here in terms of point of control at the value area zone, then you're going to assume that this area here has to show support to come back up to it. But if it changes... And it doesn't have that, and the point of control goes back down to here. We've had a change in the dynamic of value. This area here seems to be the point where they're doing the business, not up there. So it's going to be harder for me to trade towards that zone. As long as Bitcoin stays away from this zone and doesn't exchange contract. Look, 646, that's good. It's moving away from it. So I can now be in line to say, you know what? I assume they're going to come up now towards that 655, take the trade and pay, pay, play the game. This is how you break it down. This is based on real-time data. No, not, not really any charts, no moving averages. You're just understanding the way it's moving, okay? You've picked two clear points in the chart. Look, it's moving away from it. Happy days. I'm not too worried about that 646 anymore. It's moving away from it. So we want to see it go. 655, so that's 34,449. That's good news for me. So far, so good. Now, when you're trading depth of market, you're looking for ticks, little ticks in profit. Scalp the dear life out of it. Get it? Scalp. Dr. Vector, all that stuff, you know. Now, Bitcoin is working towards the VWAP. Hasn't cleared it yet. Just need to have a look at that. Let me zoom in. Hasn't cleared that vector point yet. Just need to put that over here. Here we go. We're going for the daily open, I think. We want to see it come and clear that range. Let me just move this here. That should make life a little bit easier for us. Put that there. Get the good old book map. Where are we at in times? Okay, we've got a few minutes. So okay, we're good, we're good. All right, then. So we want to be paying attention to this 655 zone. That's what we want. We don't want it to go back down to 34,289 because then the contracts are start going to get busy in this area. Here we go. Point of control change, 662. Look at that. It's changed. So that tells me now that there's something going to change on this now. Okay, see how it changed. Someone came in and dropped 20 contracts on Bitcoin and surpassed the point of control at 655. So now we've got these two zones right now. We're now looking. So we're now seeing, is this point of control at the point where it changed was where the aggressive buyers came in. In other words, the bid stepped in to sell up and the buyers came in and start picking all those contracts up. Okay. We can now assume the projection to still come into the chart and hit the daily open, which will then effectively come and clear all of the red vector candles. It might not look like a big move up, okay? But take what I'm saying about the market and put it into your analysis. And then the higher the time frame you're trading at, the same logic applies. That's what you're looking for. Okay, you, you can... Do this same logic on euro, pound, gold. The spreads are smaller. So it makes life easier for you. I know you have to put in, you know, you've got limit orders. It's a bit harder to execute market orders on Bitcoin unless you're using MT4, okay? But you have a spread there, but you don't have any fees. So it's, it's give and take. But when you trade Bitcoin futures, you don't have that problem. You can enter at market, all right? You pay a fixed fee on your contract size, all right? So there are options when it comes to trading cryptocurrency. Don't get it twisted. So they're still holding this zone right now. The market is open. Let's just quickly go over to the NASDAQ and the S&P to find out what the story is there. NASDAQ, well, look at that bad boy. Doing very, very well. I know platinum guys should be excited about that zone. Yes, you should be very interested in that range. That worked out a treat. Tell me you're doing it. Yeah, take your time with Euro, guys. Remember what I said about Euro. Gold, very interesting. Retrace, load up, hedge mode, engaged. Dollar yen, Pfft. look at this. Look at this. 
snap up, snap back down. We spoke about this yesterday, man. This thing's always going to do this at the 150 zone because we know that they're going to step in. Look, go down here. China wants to start doing the business. Where's my article? I have no article. It's irrelevant. Let's go back into the charts. Quickly going to BTC 59. Is it going to be doing it or not? Um, let me just have a look at Solana for a second. Solana. It's getting very busy, Solana. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's trending. So it shows me that we are going to be seeing Solana try and make a little bit of a move up because it's showing that move at the moving averages. Something seems to happen, but the move is not as aggressive. So this move down here is not as aggressive as what you would expect it to be going into this move here. So it could be a little bit more of a move higher on Solana, so be mindful of that. Professor Vector works also well. I'll take Professor Vector. Tino, can you check um, USD, SDG quick? Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Singapore dollar. All right, then. So whenever you're looking at other assets, okay, the best thing you can do with this bad boy. Um, 6J. Where are we? Here we go. So I'm going to add the yen to this bad boy. All right. So look at the yen when you're trading the Singapore dollar, okay? Yen goes down, Singapore dollar moves up, okay? That's the best thing you can do, which is no different to when euro goes down, dollar goes up, all right? Always have the yen and the dollar in your mind. There's big changes happening right now with the yen, okay? The bank's going to be stepping in. That's why I've, I've warned everyone, do not trade dollar yen, okay? I mean, you're trying to catch trends with dollar yen because you are witnessing this absolute madness right here where you see a move up spike lower you're getting shaken out bullied off so just be very mindful with it here we go tesla just need to have a look at tesla so we're looking for tesla to come back down towards this 204 zone it all depends on what they plan on doing at the start of the marketplace let me just have a look at what's going on here um pepe i'm not looking at pepe sorry bro um, Beppe, I'm a vectorologist. Caesar, name taken, bro. I'm a vectorologist. Um, yeah, so like, uh, <laughs> you know, I need, I need, I need, I need a good little laugh. Here we go. Google, gap down again. Problem. Gap down again on Google. They should be loading up Google right now. 124, man. It's bad news. Okay, they've missed estimates, but they should be loading up on Google. But then again, what did we say earlier on? The stock to bond ratio is too much. Look at whenever, right, the stock to bond ratio peaks out. This was an anomaly right here, okay? But whenever the stock to bond ratio has these peaks, it's a turning point. And we are effectively at a turning point right now. That means stocks are too, have been overvalued for such a long time. That is actually coming into play right now with the NASDAQ, with the S&P, okay? And that's why we're witnessing the NASDAQ climbing up from these lows, which is why we are witnessing the bond market moving up, okay? It's short term. That's the thing. You've got to look at the volatility index starting to turn over. If you remember, platinum members, look at that. Back into the vector candle recovery range. When this goes up, you go short. When this goes down, you go long, all right? We go into the hype. Of it on the one hour time frame have we got vectors we have a vector candle region right here if i'm correct come on there we go vector candle zone vector candle zone short term we do have the possibility of prices going up as this goes down because players are taking off their risk short covering coming into play so puts are right now being squeezed so their margins are being hit all right calls are coming into play and then we've got the vector candles right here which would suggest prices to move later on down to going down later when the VIX goes up. So look, just to put it into the simple terms. The VIX goes down, assets go up. When the VIX goes up, assets go down. Okay? That's the best way for it. All right? Cool. Before I leave, there is a trading competition. All right? With Mexi, everything is in the description of the video. Get yourself involved. You have two hours until the event ends because you need to join, create your account. And then the competition starts on the 1st of November. Everything you need is in the description. And of course, you want to check out all these market updates and daily setups that I do for the guys in the platinum section and the gold section. 
go to tradersreality.com where you will get the flavor over there. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a very interesting 24 hours or so. The market's had all the news that's come out. I need to get these shades off. I hope you're enjoying the shades, but I need to take them off to say thank you very much. Mad love and respect, and my eyes are actually blurred out. Take care of yourselves, gang, and I'll see you all tonight. Peace.